What's up guys, it's Nick Kutsi here from Mychondria and today I want to talk about a really important topic and that is, you know, the argument of sunlight versus red light therapy. You know, should you just be going in the sun, maybe you don't need to use red light therapy or on the other end of the spectrum, can you just use a red light therapy device and now you don't need to go outside in the sun. Now, if you've never watched any videos and you've never heard of me before, my name is Nick Kutsia and I am the founder of Mychondria and we have a red light, we are a red light therapy company. So what I'm going to say now is, you know, it could be biased, but I'm also going to be honest with you that there are red light therapy companies out there that promote uh, red light therapy as, you know, almost better than sunlight because it doesn't have the damaging rays. I'm not one of those people um, and I'm going to like clearly state it now that I don't think sunlight and red light therapy should be viewed as a one or the other thing. I think they um, work very synergistically in order to, you know, bioharmonize yourself and reconnect with a natural light environment. But I'm not one of those people who pushes it and saying, you know, it's better or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start off by defending sunlight. So where most um, people, when they try and bash sunlight and say how red light therapy is better, they will talk about things like ultraviolet light. And they will say, you know, this is the type of light that can cause skin burns. Now, I firmly believe that ultraviolet light is actually very healthy for you. You just need to be responsible with it. Um, and most people don't get outside enough. So what ends up happening is they, you know, it's like trying to run a marathon without doing any training. They go outside and no wonder they burn is because they live under artificial blue light all the time. Um, so their skin isn't actually prepared for absorbing ultraviolet light. Now, you need that for proper vitamin D synthesis and vitamin D is a hormone. So many people are deficient in vitamin D and it's the reason why they're lethargic, why they have weak immune systems, is because they're not getting enough ultraviolet light. Sunlight also has the benefit that it varies in the type of wavelengths that you will receive from it uh, across the day. So when you talk about your circadian rhythm, uh, which is basically you know, any 24 hour process that happens within your body, the main thing that sets your circadian rhythm is your light environment. Now, a lot of people will ask us, you know, how does red light therapy come into play with your circadian rhythm? How does it affect your circadian rhythm? What is the best time of day to do red light therapy? And at the end of the day, red and near infrared light, which you get from these devices, is the same type of light that the sun is always emitting. Be that sunrise, be it sunset, be middle of the day, the, the sun above your head, it's always emitting red and near infrared light. So your body doesn't actually pay a lot of attention to uh, red and near infrared light in order to tell it, you know, what time of day it is. That's where things like blue light come into play. Now, a lot of people talk about blue light and say how it's extremely bad. And I've actually made an entire video on that. It's called, is blue light um, actually good for you? Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But basically, you know, the type of artificial light that we do get indoors from like in our offices, that has a very high, frequent, high um, amount of blue light, which can be damaging. But at the end of the day, a healthy amount of blue light with the right context, so also involving red and near infrared light at the same time, is exactly what nature would have exposed us to and helped us to set our circadian rhythm. So sunlight is extremely important. It's not one replaces the other, in my opinion. There's benefits to sun, uh, sunlight that you can't get with red light therapy. Essentially what we're doing with red light therapy is we're taking the most dominant frequencies of light that the sun would be emitting, and you're basically starving of it, starving of that type of light if you're living an indoor lifestyle. You know, red light therapy would be, it would serve no purpose to someone who was living outside all the time. You know, if we went to like the Hudson tribe in, um, I think it's in Tanzania, and we you know, gave them red light therapy devices, we probably wouldn't see the benefits like we do in the scientific literature. You know, there's such profound effects that we see in the clinical studies. And that I firmly believe is because people are just so disconnected from their natural light environment. If you took someone who was living outside all the time um, and you know, getting fresh air, getting natural sunlight, and uh, being outside, we probably wouldn't see that much of a benefit when they started using red light therapy. So that's what I'm going to say is the pro with red light therapy and that's where I think it fits into this whole picture is for most people and that's myself included I don't have the luxury of being able to be outside all the time and getting enough red and near infrared light in order to stimulate my cells make sure that my mitochondria are happy and that I can tap into all of these benefits that you should be getting from sunlight. So with a red light therapy device, what's really cool is we can pick the specific frequencies that have the most um, upregulation of energy within your cells. So that'll be um, 630 and 660 nanometers. Those are two red colors and also 850 nanometers, which is a near infrared um, color. Color, It's non-visible. Um, and we've basically been able to, with um, LED devices, pinpoint those frequencies and deliver them to you in a really high dose. So that's why we always say, you know, three to five minutes, you can get a pretty decent dose of red light therapy 
using one of the mitochondria devices. So in a way, red light therapy becomes a way to supplement your light environment because you can't be outside enough. That doesn't mean to say that you can just switch on a red light therapy device and never think that you need to go outside again and get natural light exposure. There's a lot of benefits to that. It also can be a great tool though to use red light therapy um, because one of the things I mentioned earlier is that most people tend to burn when they go outside and they you know, just on the odd occasion get a bit of sunlight exposure. That is because their skin hasn't been prepared and the melanin within their skin hasn't been prepared by red and near-infrared light. You see in nature what's really clever is you will never get ultraviolet light in high quantities in the um, early hours of the day or at sunset. So what basically would happen in nature is you would go outside and see the sunrise and your skin would get exposed to this high concentration of red and near infrared light. And that helps to activate the melanin within your skin so that later in the day when the sun is above your head and there is more ultraviolet light present, your skin is now able to better absorb that type of light in order to make more vitamin D. So a very common question you know, people will ask us is, you know, can red light therapy um, help boost your, your vitamin D levels? And the direct answer is no, because red and near infrared light doesn't um, stimulate vitamin D production within your skin, but it can help to prepare your skin better so that when you do go outside, you don't tend to get burnt. And that's why you know, we see a lot of people um, start, you know, they take a picture and they say, I've never been this brown before since using red light therapy. And it's because they're able to tan better rather than to burn when they start using red light therapy in conjunction with sunlight. So just to summarize, very firmly, my standpoint is not that red light therapy should be a replacement for sunlight. And I also think in today's day and age, you shouldn't think that if you're not getting outside enough, you, can't, you, you, know, like you don't need to have a red light therapy device. I think they're two separate things. And I think in today's modern society, where you know, we're not able to live outside enough and we're getting exposed to a lot of artificial blue light, red light therapy is an essential tool in order to harmonize your light environment. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be a replacement. You still want to get outside, set your circadian rhythm, you know, get the sunrise, especially in the morning, is a great way to set your circadian rhythm. But then, you know, let's say, for instance, you had, let's say you had an hour in the morning, you knew you had before you had to get to work, uh, and you had an hour free. I would go and spend 45 minutes of that outside catching the sunrise, you know, maybe eating my, my food outside, my breakfast outside, having my feet in the ground. But then for the last 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the device you got, you could probably even get away with five minutes head inside and get a really healthy dose of red in and near infrared light. And that's gonna to help to you know, also offset some of the artificial blue light that I know so many of us get exposed to um, in our offices. Right now, I've got a ring light on. You know, I, I will use artificial light when it is needed, but you can put your money down that the next thing I'm gonna do after this is I'm going to go and get outside in some natural sunlight, and I'm also going to offset that with a healthy session of red light therapy. If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to drop them in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, then let us know. Uh, other than that, I hope that you guys have a fantastic day further, and we will chat again soon. Cheers.